Hi, today I want to talk about coincidences. It's a subject I've touched on before, but recently a colleague posed a new problem. He said that he knew a married couple who both died within a short space of time from a rare disease, a disease which only four in every hundred thousand people per year die. And he felt that this was too incredible a coincidence for it to have happened purely by chance and that he felt surely there must be some underlying non-medical cause which resulted in these deaths. So this is similar to problems that we've seen before, like for example this Canadian woman who won the jackpot lottery twice within a few years and people have claimed that for example the chance of this happening approximately one in 200 billion. And here's actually a real example of that. It's not the one I was mentioning, but it's a real example of a husband and wife who both die of cancer on the same day. Again, what's the probability that a husband and wife both die then of the same rare disease in a short space of time, purely by chance, without some other causal explanation? And the answer is that in both cases, the chances are much higher than most people think. But before answering this specific question, and the lottery one as well, let's first look at a common misunderstanding about probability that's relevant to this question by just considering the roll of the die. The probability of rolling a 6 on a fair die is 1 6. So what's the probability of rolling a 6 in 3 rolls of the die? The common but incorrect answer is to say, well, it must be a half because 3 times a 6 is a half. Well, it's clearly wrong because on that reckoning, if you roll the die six times, then the probability that you'd roll a six would be one. So it would be certain that you'd roll a six in six rolls of the die. And clearly this is not the case. But it's actually wrong for two reasons. First of all, there's ambiguity in the question. It could mean either, what's the probability of rolling exactly one six in three rolls of the die? Or... What's the probability of rolling at least one six in three rolls of the die? So these are two completely separate questions. So let's consider the probability of each of these in turn. So first of all, what is the probability of rolling exactly one six in three rolls of the die? Well, there are three ways we can achieve this outcome. The first roll could be a six, the second roll could be not a six, and the third roll could be not a six. So we've got a six, no six, no six. And this has got probability 1 6 times 5 6 times 5 6, which is 25 over 216, which is 0.1157. Alternatively, roll 1 could be not a 6, roll 2 could be the 6, and roll 3 could be not a 6. So we've got that sequence, no 6, 6, and no 6. That's got probability 5 6 times a 6 times 5 6, which is, again, 25 over 216. It's the same, 0.1157. And finally, we can have a situation where the first two rolls are not sixes and the third roll is a six. And that's I've got probability 5, 6 times 5, 6 over 1 over 6, which again is 0.1157. Now because the outcome is made up of these three mutually exclusive events, the probability of the outcome is just the sum of these three probabilities. So the probability of rolling exactly 1, 6 in three rolls is just add those up, it's 3 times 0.1157, which is 0.347. So that's the answer to the probability of rolling exactly 1 6 in 3 rolls of the die. But what's the probability of rolling at least 1 6 in 3 rolls of the die? Well that's just 1 minus the probability that we roll no 6 in any of the 3 rolls. It turns out it's actually easier to work out the probability that we roll no 6s in any of the 3 rolls than working out the probability directly that we roll at least one. So the probability of rolling no sixes in three rolls, well that's just no six, no six, no six, and each of those has probability five six. So the probability that happens is 0.579. And so the probability of rolling at least one six in three rolls of the die is just one minus that. And that's 0.421. And of course that's got a higher probability than the probability of rolling exactly one because we could roll one, we could roll two, or we could roll three. So you expect that to have a higher probability. Well let's address the lottery example, but I'm going to start with a very simple lottery. And this is a lottery where you've just got a thousand numbers, one, two, three, up to a thousand. And you buy a ticket with one number, so each ticket enables you to choose one number. 
The probability of winning this lottery of a single ticket is clearly 1 over 1,000. What's the probability of winning this lottery at least once in 10 attempts? Well, the common incorrect answer again is that it must be 10 times 1 over 1,000, which is 1 over 100, 1%. In this case, the incorrect answer isn't a bad approximation of the correct answer, but it's still wrong. So the correct probability is 1 minus the probability that we don't win in any of the 10 attempts. And the probability of not winning on a single attempt is 999 over 1,000. So the probability of not winning in 10 attempts is 999 over 1,000 times 999 over 1,000 10 times, which is 9... 199 over 1,000 to the power of 10, which is that figure, 0.990045. So the probability of winning this lottery at least once in 10 attempts is 1 minus that, which is 0.009955, which is actually just under 1%. But what about the probability that the same person wins the lottery twice within a short period? Now, the naive and wildly incorrect answer to this question is 1 over 1,000 times 1 over 1,000, which is 1 over a million. But in fact, this 1 in a million probability is the probability that one specific person will win the lottery twice in two attempts. But even for one specific person, in any given period, say one year, it's likely that he or she plays the lottery once or twice a week and will buy several tickets each time. Hence, within any one-year period, this person may make hundreds of different attempts to win the lottery. So, let's suppose, as a conservative estimate, that there are 200 attempts. Then the probability of winning the lottery twice is 1 minus the probability that less than two of these tickets are winning tickets. Now, the probability that none of the 200 are winning tickets is 999 over 1,000 to the power of 200, or you multiply it 200 times. And that is equal to 0.81865. What about the probability that exactly one of the 200 are winning tickets? Well, that can happen in 200 ways. The winning ticket could be the first ticket, or it could be the second ticket, or the third ticket, etc. So there are 200 ways of doing that. And each of them has a probability of 999 over 1,000 to the power of 199, because we're going to have 199 losing tickets, times 1 over 1,000 for the one winning ticket. So it's 200 times 999 over 1,000 to the power of 199, times 1 over 1,000, which is 0.164. So the probability that less than two of the tickets are winning tickets, that's the probability that none, or exactly one, is just the sum of those two probabilities, which is 0.9825. And hence the probability that at least two of the tickets are winning tickets is 1 minus that, which is 0.1745. And of course that's just under 2%, which is 1 in 50, which of course is very different from the 1 in a million answer. But that still massively underestimates the probability that the same person wins the lottery twice within a year, because that probability is much higher when you realise that we're not restricted to this one specific year. If within, say, any 30-year period, this specific person won the lottery twice within the same year, we would consider this as a case of the same person winning the lottery twice within the same year. So what is the probability that in any 30 years, this person wins the lottery twice within the same year? Well, it's 1 minus the probability that in any 30 years, this person doesn't win the lottery twice within the same year. We know that the probability that they don't win the lottery twice in the same year is 0.9825. We saw that from the previous calculation. So the probability they don't win it in any 30 years is that raised to the power 30, which is 0.5888. And so the probability that this person wins the lottery twice in the same year is 1 minus that, which is 0.4112. So there's actually a better than 40% chance that a specific person will win the lottery twice within a year in any 30-year period for this particular type of lottery. Well, we can go even further. What's the probability that somebody you know well would win the lottery twice within a year in any 30-year period? Well, it actually turns out it's almost certain. Why? Because let's suppose that you know just 20 people well who play the lottery then the problem is that none of these will win the lottery twice within any 30-year period 
is that 0.588, which we calculated before, to so the power 20, which is 0.000251. So the probability that at least one of them would win the lottery twice within a year in any 30 year period is 1 minus that, which is 0.999975. That's 99.9975%, it's almost certain. Well, of course, the lottery that Anne Le Pin won in Canada twice within a few years was a 6 from 49 ball lottery. And that's very different to the lottery we're talking about here because the probability of winning that on a single ticket is much lower than 1 in 1,000. It's 1 in almost 14 million. And the so-called 1 in 200 billion probability happens by, purely by chance is to make that mistake of assuming that you win it twice with two consecutive tickets. And that's simply 1 over the almost 14 million times 1 over almost 14 million, which is where you get to the 1 over 200 billion. But of course, we now know that that's wrong. So what is the probability of a specific person winning such a lottery twice in the same year. We do the same calculations again. Here again, we assume that they make 200 attempts per year, which is pretty conservative for lottery players. The probability that none of the 200 are winning tickets is just 13,983,815 divided by 13,983,816 to the power of 200 which is that figure, 0.999985, etc. The probability exactly one of the 200 are winning tickets is, again, using the same method as before, that number. And therefore, the probability that less than two of the tickets are winning tickets is just the sum of those two numbers, which is that, which means that the probability at least two of the tickets are winning tickets is one minus that, which is incredibly unlikely. That seems almost impossible. But is it? Well, again, we first have to consider the probability it happens at least within, say, 30 years. That's, again, using the same calculations as before. That turns out to be that number. It's still almost impossible, in fact. But in 30 years, there will be many millions of different players in the USA and Canada playing this lottery. Suppose there are 100 million players then the probability at least one of them wins twice in 30 years is 1 minus that 0.999 figure raised to the 100 million, which is 1 minus 0.118837, which is actually 0.88. So that's actually better than an 88% chance. So it's not a miracle we find a person winning the lottery twice in the space of a year. Rather... We would be very surprised if during the course of 30 years we didn't find a person winning it twice within the space of a year. So finally, we know how to do the types of calculations necessary to compute the probability that husband and wife both die of the same very rare disease within a short period of time, purely by chance, without some other causal explanation. And in the particular example that I was asked to look at, We've got the observation that only four in every 100,000 people every year die of this particular disease, D. Yet a husband and wife both died of it within the space of a year. And the assumption was that it couldn't be coincidence. There must be some other causal explanation. Well, not necessarily. The probability that a specific husband and wife died of D in one specific year is indeed four of 100,000 times four of 100,000, which is incredibly unlikely. And so the probability it doesn't happen is just 1 minus that. But as before, we've also got to consider the probability that this doesn't happen to the specific husband and wife over, say, 15 years. And that probability is just that number to the raise to the power of 15, which is that number. But there are millions of married couples in the world. Even if we restrict it to one country with, say, 1 million couples, the probability it doesn't happen in a 15-year period is then that raised to the power of 1 million, which is 0.9763. That means there's a probability of 1 minus that, which is 0.0237, which is a 2.37% chance. It will happen without any causal explanation, I purely coincidentally. Now, in a country of 50 million couples, we get the following probability it won't happen. 
It's that number raised to the power of 50 million, which is just over 0.3. And that means there's an almost 70% probability that it will happen purely by chance.